Hi everyone, welcome back to another exciting video here in Photoshop made just for you designers. My name is Brian Lee and today I'm going to be showing you how to use Photoshop's measurement tools to create accurate 3D rooms that are built to scale. This way you can place custom product images confidently knowing that they will fit in your client's space. You'll also learn how to create visually accurate installation guides inside your design boards that your client can refer to when setting up items in their space, like artwork, and drapes, or shelves, other aspects like that, that you need to be accurate. This tutorial is just one example from our most popular course, Mastering Interior Design Boards. If you haven't heard of it, the course offers a fully functional Photoshop template, as well as an in-depth training on creating professional 3D design boards fast. In this tutorial, we'll be using the Living Room Design Kit, but if you don't have it, don't worry, you can still learn Photoshop measuring tools for other aspects of your workflow. So without further delay, let's jump right in. Alright, so I'm just going to start by opening up the Living Room Kit here, and then go into Walls. And the idea here is I want to get my back wall to be approximately 15 feet long. Um, so the question becomes, how do I know how big my current space is? You can see up here in the ruler section, if I right click, I currently have pixels set, but if I come down here to inches, you'll see it changes to inches. Now if you don't see the rulers, you might need to hit Command or Control R to turn them on or off. And uh, you can also find them up here in View, go down to Rulers. So that gives me kind of an idea of my current size here. So that's 360 inches. Now I want to convert that to feet. I want to be able to see feet along here. Um, but Photoshop currently doesn't have that option, right? So there's only inches or other different types of uh, measurement tools, but not feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my document size, basically dividing it by 12 so that I just see feet. So I'm going to go up to Image, I'm going to go to Image Size, and you'll see it's currently set to pixels, so we want to change that to inches. Now the important thing here to remember is you need to come down here and turn off Resample. So that's going to make sure that nothing about your document actually changes, except for the numbers themselves. So your image quality will stay the same, and the size of your file will also stay the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down to uh, 360 divided by 12 is 30. Now we're going to leave it at inches, but we're going to th now think of this as feet. All right, so I'm going to hit enter. And you can see nothing has changed except for my rulers. So this is really cool because now I can think of this entire distance of being 30 feet long. So why that works so well is because I can come over here to tools like my line tool. And now if I drag out a line from this back wall, holding shift, I can keep it nice and straight, to the corner, you can see that my current wall is 11 feet long, approximately. But I want it to be 15 feet long. So I'm just going to keep dragging it out until I get to 15. OK, now if you are having a hard time with that drag, you can always come up here, um, right click on this section and change it to inches and just make sure that you're at 15. And we can change this one to inches too. So now the only problem that you would run into with cheating the inches to feet system like this was if you were going to print this image out to scale. Um, so normally you're probably not gonna be printing out a 30 foot long image unless you're in the billboard business, which since you're here, you're probably not. Anyway, we are now going to take this shape layer and take it to the top of the layer panel. And then I'm just going to center it. So if I just grab it and move it over, if I hold shift, it'll keep it nice and flat and a little purple line will pop up. If you're not seeing those lines, again, just go up to view, go to extras. Or you can drag out a ruler line. If I move this over, the middle of this canvas is 15. And there you go. If you don't want to see those lines anymore, just hit Command or Control H. 
and that basically turns off extras. Excellent, so now we have a good guide for the size of our back wall. So all we need to do at this point is move our right wall out, holding shift. Now move our left wall out, holding shift. And there we go, so we have a nice 15 foot back wall. So let's see what else you can do with the measuring tool. So we know that this one's 15 feet. So let's just duplicate it. I'm gonna hold Alt, drag that up. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a guide for a couch I wanna bring in. Now I know this couch is about six feet wide. So I'm gonna hit Command T. And then I'm gonna come up here to my width and height. And if, uh, if you don't see inches here, remember you can right click and go to inches. So uh, now if I just go over here and I drop this down to six, you can see that I'm now six feet long. So I'll just hit enter. And now when I bring in my couch, bring in the sofa, there we go. So then I can just line my sofa up to make sure that it is the correct scale to the room. Six feet, it's pretty much there. Measuring along the back edge, and then just place it. Oftentimes we need to provide our clients with accurate setup instructions, like how to set up artwork, drapes, and shelves. With Photoshop's measuring capabilities, you can incorporate visual measurements inside your design boards that your client can refer back to when setting up their own space. So in this part, I'm gonna show you how to use Photoshop to do this. All right, so lastly, I just wanna add some visual measurements that our client can use when they're setting up these items in their home. So what I wanna do first is probably just measure out the height of these picture frames. So I'm gonna measure from the floor to the bottom of the picture frames. To get started, I like to come to the line tool down here. You know, to make our lives easier, let's turn off the furniture. And then I can just drag straight up from the floor, holding shift, and you can see that the numbers are telling me exactly how high that is. And so that's coming out to about three and a half feet. And then I'll just hit the T tool, or I'm sorry, the T button, and that's gonna bring up the text tool. And let's just type in 3.5. I think that was it, let me hit Command T again just to double check. Yeah, 3.5 is about right. And then let's just go ahead and do that again. First, I'm gonna come over here to the Layers panel. I'm gonna hold Shift and just group these by hitting Command G. All right. And then I can just come in here individually and move these around. And I just wanna duplicate this by holding Alt, dragging up, and then I can move it over. Then if I could just take the shape and hit Command T, drag that up a little bit higher, whoops. And uh, this one's about an extra inch above, so 3.6, let's say. Ought to give the right result. Double click on the text tool. Okay, let's duplicate that group one more time. Move it over. And this will be a little bit higher. Come down to the shape and hit Command T. Drag that up again. So this is about maybe two inches higher. Maybe inch and a half, let's say 3.75. Okay, 3.75. All right, let's just keep going down the line there. And then again, open up the group, go to the shape, and hit Command T. And right around, let's say 4.1. So that'll do it for the last one there. And now let's just see what it looks like if we turn the furniture back on. It's kind of, kind of nasty. So let's hold Command. I'm sorry. Let's hold Shift. And select all these groups. I'm going to hit Command G just to group all those together. 
Now, maybe we could just reduce the opacity of this group so that it's nice and easy. Or you could deliver a separate image that just shows them the dimensions of these picture frames. So I could just save this out as its own uh, design board in a way. So you could have two presentation JPEGs. So lastly, what I want to do is try to get a measurement for this curtain over here. So what I'd like to do first is just make sure I know the height of this wall. So I'm going to check the height of the back wall by just dragging this up. And I can see there that it's about 10 and a half feet. So now all I have to do is go into my right wall, double click on that, and I just want to make sure that this wall is going to be the same height. So 10 and a half uh, feet is what we want. So let's just check the image size here. I'm pretty sure it's going to be inaccurate. So we'll just need to make this 10.5. You'll notice that I have resample unchecked, so it's not going to change anything except for our units. So cool. So now if I drag my line tool straight up, I should have uh, about 10 and a half foot wall there. There we go. But I don't want to know the wall height. I just want to know the height of these curtains. So let's drag this up. And it's approximately, let's say, 9 feet. Perfect. So I'm going to take that measurement and I'm going to go back in here and I'll just make a, you know, just a rough line going straight up. Now you can see here, if we we're going to use this measurement, it would come out to be 14.7. And so that's incorrect. But due to the perspective of this room, it's giving us the wrong reading, which is why it was important to go into the right wall to make the measurement first. And we will hit T and just type in nine feet. So thank you for joining me on another Photoshop adventure for interior designers. Hopefully you now have a solid understanding or at least a great reference to refer back to the next time you need to make an accurate design. Remember, this was only a sneak peek of what's inside our Mastering Interior Design Boards course. The course contains everything you need to create professional, realistic 3D design boards, including our dynamic Photoshop template that helps you build rooms in minutes without having to worry about perspective, beginner to advanced training that can only be found in this course on preparing product images, creating realistic lighting, and texturing details, and effects such as reflections, contact shadows, and much, much more. You'll even get live training with me to make sure you don't get stuck anywhere along the way. I made this course to be the last course you'll ever need to take for making and presenting professional 3D design boards that will win you bids, impress your clients, and build up a portfolio that you can be proud of and that will have you standing out from the competition. So reserve your spot today by following the link below in the comments section. I look forward to having you in the course and to help you master interior design boards. Until next time, take care and happy designing.